Oh, well, hello everybody and welcome back to Triplicate, home of interesting electronics. Now when I started making these videos, I did notice that my power amplifier was humming uh, more than it used to, uh, to the point where I have to turn it off when I'm filming. And my power amplifier being this guy, so if I turn it on, uh, and shut up talking. There, you can just hear a faint hum, and you can also see the speaker jumps um, when the power cut turns on, but it's always done that and the speakers have uh, survived. Okay, so I started looking into this, and uh, the first thing I did, of course, was Google the power amplifier, which is a, if we can see that, HVA2100. So, we Google the HVA2100, and one of the top websites we come up with is radiomuseum.org. Ah, how long have I had this thing? Well, if we look down here, it says year 1995. And thinking back, it probably was 96 when I bought it making it 23 years old so it doesn't owe me anything mind you Amazon still list it though they say it is currently unavailable and they don't know when this item will be back in stock uh, never Amazon I suspect anyway this probably explains why it's humming because the, I'm guessing the electrolytic capacitors in the power supply are just deteriorating with age and not doing their job anymore. Eventually they stop working completely, which is what happened in the uh, Casio digital horn uh, that I repaired. And when that happens, that starts making that horrible squeaking noise. So I might at some point try and change the capacitors in there and see if I can bring it back. Uh, but for now I sort of started looking around for alternatives and the alternative I found was this guy. I just move calculators and phones and things. Uh, move the head torch. which is finest from China a power amplifier which claims to be 50 watts a channel and it comes in a tiny little board with what's basically a very small heat sink on how can that be? okay so out of the packet here it is it comes with a little connector on the back. Can we get the camera to focus on that? We can. So it's got left out, right out, VCC and ground. Single rail supply. Easy enough. And the other end, it has a volume control, which claims to have a switch, does it? Yes, it does. Click. Oh, that's good. And it has a... Is that a three and a half mil socket? Looks like it. Stereo socket for input and a three pin... I'm oh, sorry. Three pin connector. And with it you get volume control and not and wash over the volume for the volume control pot and you get four little pillars to mount the board on and only three nuts oh well 
and nothing else left in the bag. So there we go. Um, before we actually get into doing anything with it, I think we should have a look at uh, what is actually under this little heat sink since it claims 100 watts a channel. So, what is lurking under that little heatsink on our power amplifier board? Well, here we have the eBay listing for the board, which tells me here it's a TPA 3116D2 digital amplifier chip, digital amplifier chip, no less. So, let us look at the data sheet for that chip and it tells you in the text but it's it you can infer it from the functional block diagram if you look here it says pwm M, pwm logic so what this chip is actually doing is essentially it's switched mode so, uh, conventional power amplifiers are more like this. So, the transistors are on all the time and putting as much current into the load as the load needs at any time. So, uh, we can see if the load is half on then the transistor must also be half on and must be dissipating as much power as the load. So in general this kind of amplifier of which my old power amplifier definitely is the driving transistors are dissipating as much heat as being put into the output so they generally have quite big chunky speeds quite big chunky heat sinks on. This guy, if you want half power, instead of tran turning the transistor half on, you turn it fully on and then fully off and then fully on and then fully off for equal times very very fast. I hope that makes sense. The advantage of this is the transistors are either on or off and when they're fully on they're not dissipating very much heat. Hence we can have quite a decent amount of power with a very little heat sink on the top of the chip. And so down here you obviously don't want this high frequency switching to appear on the speaker so you use an LC filter to filter it out here and if we go down here it tells you uh, that it switches at four or five or six hundred kilohertz around half a megahertz which is way above the audio band. Here they're saying it can interfere with AM radio. Okay, so shall we get this wired up and see how it performs? Now we need to mount it in some kind of a box. And I had a hunt round and the best box I could find was that one, which as you can see is somewhat over the top, but it's one I had, so that's the one I'm going to use. Um, I'm proposing to bring the power wires and the speaker wires straight in through a slot in the back of the box since it's fixed, it never goes anywhere so I don't really need to unplug it and if I do need to unplug it all I'll just have to go in the bottom and take the screws out and oh. It's a Hammond box, it's a good one, made in Canada. So, there we go. Right, again, I will spare you 
uh, footage of me drilling holes and bring you back when I've mounted it up. Okay, so here it is, all wired up. I've drilled lots of nice ventilation holes in the case and added three holes in the back for the speaker wires and the power wire. And I guess it's the moment of truth, time to turn it on. Now, not that I don't trust it, however, I am going to try running it into resistors. On each channel here we've just got two 2.7 ohms in series giving 5.4 ohms. Some sort of a sensible load. And we've got the power wire. And I'm just going to put the multimeter on it. Okay, so we have the multimeter on DC volts and we'll see what comes out of it. We've got the power supply set to 12 volts, the current limit right down, so shall we do it? Okay, so we turn the current limit up and it comes up to 12 volts and draws no current and we get a groovy little purpley blue LED so that's a good start so let's have a look and see what's on the outputs 6 volts 6 volts 6 volts and 6 volts so I would say that is functioning correctly so shall we connect the speakers to it ok so I've got the speakers connected up uh, temporarily, I'm going to have to come up with something better. Let me shine a light on this because it's in my eyes. There are some short circuits waiting to happen in there, but it'll do us for now. So, what do we say? Are we going to turn her on and see what happens? A fair bit of noise. I hope that's just. Oh, okay. We've got an off switch as well. So that's because the ends are floating. So far. Okay, so. Right, so I'm going to connect these up to my little output mixer here and see if we can put some real signal through and bring you back. Alright, so we connect it up. It's a bit hissy. Oh well, let's see. We have here my Stanage tunnel piece, so play your own music, blow your own trumpet.
supply modules and I'm hoping I can get one little fitting in the top there so it'll be entirely self-contained so I'll do that Okay, so basically I had a change of mind and decided I'd spent enough time faffing around with this thing for now. Uh, so it's just going as it is. And instead of buying a power supply to mount in the box, I just bought an AC adapter. 12 volts because the amount of sound level I need in here is, is minimal, it's only a tiny little room and I'm an old man so I don't like music on that loud. Right, so I had, let's pull this back off here a bit further. Okay, so I had a piece of twin core uh, wire I got for the boat rated at something like 20 amps to supply the power and this power supply came with this terminal block to go on the plug I don't know why but it did so I wired that into there uh, need some signal there we go, some signal and some power and a huge hum, that's not good. Okay, so it's another day because the battery went flat on the camera and I was chasing round after the problem with it humming a lot which I've traced A to some weird earthing in here which I'm going to have to go into at some point um, including I might try putting an optical link between the PC and the amplifier so the audio ground isn't connected to the USB ground um, which is never a good idea and also I found in the end if you turn this thing up it hums and that I think is cause, just because there's a lot of gain on the the input of this amplifier so I might see if I can get a hold of a schematic and drop the gain till then um, just to turn it down <laughs> And it's working. Um, it doesn't hum or hiss or anything. And if I press that, there we go. And that is one of the demo tunes for the Pulse or my VST plugin. If anybody's interested, uh, I. I think I need to resurrect that at some point. Anyway, uh, so that's working for now well enough and I've had enough of it, so I'm going to move on. So there it is in position and I'm sure I'll be revisiting it as I plan to revisit the whole of the audio setup in here. But I think that'll do for now, so hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of them. Leave a comment if you've got anything to say. Thumbs up, please, and I'll catch you next time. Uh, so for now, it's goodbye from Triplicate, home of interesting electronics. Goodbye.